Hi there, I'm Leif Gregerson, and I'd like to welcome you to my Mental Health Coping Skills Vlog. Um, I'd also like to wish you a very happy holiday, so although I imagine most of this video's uh, hits will be much after the holidays, although what I'm going to touch on is something that's important all the time. Uh, what I want to talk about today is depression. Depression ran in my family. I had an aunt with it, an uncle with it. Um, my mother had severe depression. Um, my aunt and uncle had diagnoses of uh, just depression, uh, some with psychosis, and um, myself. Uh, I started experiencing depression around the age of seven, and so I really didn't know much else than the way things were. Um, there, it was just so much around, and I didn't, I didn't really know it was different. Um, now I think one of the things you have to do is start watching out for the signs of depression. Um, they can be sleeping too much, they can be sleeping too little, uh, they can be morbid thoughts. Um, you can just, uh, just be very negative and um, you can have poor sleeping habits um, that uh, are, are accompanied with nightmares or many different things really. And uh, when you start thinking about uh, the unthinkable, uh, which is suicide, um, that's when you really need to reach out and get some help. Um, on my previous video, uh, the Mental Health Coping Skills Vlog, I put the numbers of some mental health agencies, and I think I should put them in the description on this video again as well. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about depression because depression is something we don't all have to go through. Some of us will have to go through it, and yet many of those people will be able to function. Um, in my case, of the extreme case, I had symptoms of depression, schizophrenia, bipolar. Um, my official diagnosis was uh, schizoaffective disorder with anxiety. Um, anxiety is a very sneaky, um, a very sneaky illness as well. Uh, I have a good friend who was going to medical school and, and doing really well in her life and anxiety caught up with her and she had to drop out, everything changed and uh, the sad thing now, I'm, I'm actually very proud that she does work, that she does uh, go on with her life, uh, but it's not, it doesn't compare to what she could have done. Uh, she's currently a waitress and uh, although I don't, I don't fault someone for being a waitress, um, it's, it's just she could have been so much more fulfilled. Now the question is could she have somehow overcome that and gone back? Um, I don't know if she would want to at this point. I don't know if it was possible. Uh, all I know is some ways to cope with depression. When I was about 17 years old I was working at a gas station. I had a really great car. I had a, a beautiful 1978 Cobra and I would have fun at work and I would enjoy myself being around people my age and then work would end and I'd get in my car and you know I was living in this beautiful city and everything was just going great. I had my whole life ahead of me and yet I was just in a fog of depression. And, and what I didn't know is that I could have just gone to my doctor and talked to him about it. And he may have been able to give me a referral to a psychiatrist. Um, he may have been able to give me antidepressants right there to try out. Uh, that would have been difficult, but if somehow I could have dealt with that depression, it's possible that I could have dealt with some of the symptoms that came along later as well. I just kept putting everything off because uh, I didn't understand mental illness. And um, how do you diagnose something in yourself? It, it's just very difficult. Um, so. When you're experiencing depression or you're around the holidays or even just at a time where you feel things are starting to break down, um, it's important to have tried ahead of time uh, to foresee things. Um, now myself, I have a history of being in the hospital a number of times, uh, except for one short occasion. I haven't been in the hospital for about maybe 18 years now and um, that last time, 18 years ago, was a very long hospital stay, it was six months. And if I had adequately prepared myself for it, it would have been a lot less of a horrible stay. 
some of the ways you can prepare yourself is uh, you can make sure someone knows what doctor you want to see, what hospital you want to go to. Um, you can be proactive and you can go ahead and take yourself to an emergency room and, and explain what's going on. And um, they, if they have the resources, they may admit you. Although I have to warn you if, you, if you attempt to enter the hospital around the holidays, it will be quite difficult because so many people are having so many problems. And um, I really think it's best to try and hold on as long as you can without having to be in the hospital. So many people these days, uh, because of things such as the early psychosis intervention clinic that we have here in Alberta, um, so many people, young people, are able to find treatment for their mental illness without having to go to the hospital, and I think that's wonderful. Um, the thing is, if you do feel you might have to go in the hospital, one of the things you can do is uh, prepare a little bag, um, you know, a change of clothes or some pajamas, uh, some puzzle books, uh, one or two novels to read, and um, keep it by your door. And if anything happens, whether uh, some whether somebody uh, comes to see you and decides you you have to go by the ambulance, go to the hospital by ambulance, or if you just make a decision that you're going to go to emergency and try to be admitted, um, you have that bag ready there with you, and you can possibly have your written out list of the things you want, like I want to go to this hospital, I want to be treated by this doctor, and this is the way things have to be. And um, hopefully uh, you can get those things done, because uh, in my case, I just saw a random doctor when, when I last was admitted to uh, the psychiatric hospital, and um, him and I did not get along, and we didn't get along for the whole time I was there. And I feel that I wouldn't have had to have been there for as long as I was if I didn't have that doctor, if I had a doctor I had established a better relationship with. Um, there were some very difficult things that happened. Um, when I was in the hospital, uh, I didn't go in really too willingly at first. I, I was taken and I was in, injected with a tranquilizer and uh, I was put into an isolation room. And it was very upsetting. And I ended up staying on the same ward for about five months. And my worst enemy was depression during that time. I did have voices, I did have problems, but um, really just the sadness of, uh, of feeling that my life was over. I mean, five months in the same ward in a hospital, you start to feel as though you're never going to leave and things are never going to improve. And I've been told by a lot of people that I've made some stupid mistakes, and uh, and sure, some of them were. Um, I don't know how much you would want to discuss this uh, with your family members, but one of my situations was that um, I had a number of credit cards, and I didn't have the income to pay them off. Um, I found myself recently actually starting to get more credit cards, and, and I do have the income to pay them off now that I'm working. And, and different things, but um, I noticed uh, the the credit card balance is getting a little out of hand, and so what I did was I cut up all my cards, but one with a low limit. And I think that's a I think it's a good idea for people who are suffering from mental illness because it can be so easy to spend more than you think you have. Um, but I just wanted to pass that on to you about the holidays and about depression. Um, I also wanted to let you know that. Um, I'm starting a Patreon page, and uh, you can go to uh, hmm, you can go to Patreon.com/leafg, or you can follow the link I'm going to put uh, underneath this uh, underneath this uh, video, and hopefully you can commit to uh, helping me out a little bit, so I can make more videos so I can distribute more books. Um, what I'm asking for in my Patreon video is about $5 a month pledge. And with that, I will send you two original poems that I write. And um, if you decide to pledge $8 a month, uh, then I'll send two poems. And uh, I'll send two poems and a short story that I've written. And um, you'll be having the first look at them. Nobody else will see them yet. And I also put in that if you wanted to get all of my books for $200 pledge, uh, one time only, I will uh, 
send you all my books signed and delivered. Um, yeah, and I also wanted to thank everyone for the support I've been getting. I've been getting a lot of great feedback. I want to keep on doing this, and I want to keep on making it a reality so people can find help on YouTube and other places, and um, Patreon can help me. And I'm also starting a new thing on uh, a website called Vocal. You'll have to go there and search my name, I believe. And uh, with that, I am putting free poetry, free articles, photography, and um, there's no charge at all. Uh, but I do get paid each time someone looks at them. So if you go to vocal.com and look up my name, it will be great if you could look at my stuff. Uh, sorry for all the advertisements. I promise to keep that to a minimum in further videos. But uh, just uh, wanted to let you know what I'm starting out to do and, and what some of my goals are and how you can help and be a part of them and uh, above all I would love for it for anyone to write to me uh, I can put out my I can put out my uh, email address for anyone to use it's uh, viking308000 at yahoo.com I check it several times a day and I'm very happy to help and support anyone who wants to write to me uh, once again it's viking308000 at yahoo.com thanks